vehicle drivers champion Duncan Foss and Rob Howie were the first to leave the designated service point and set up on the second loop of the race. Foss was looking for a fourth successive win on the Toyota Kalahari Botswana Desert Race, but his lead over the second team Castrol Toyota of Anthony Taylor and Robin Houghton could be counted in seconds. Taylor and Houghton were hoping their fuel pump problem had been sorted out at the DSP. With Chris Fuss and Yapi Bardnos next on the road, Toyota had a hold on the first three places in the production vehicle category, but dust was going to be a big problem for the championship leaders. While many spectators were enjoying a picnic lunch, Hobler and Christian Ho were hard at work in the RFS BMW, which was still in a solid fourth. Hobler won his first Toyota Desert race in 1986 and then had to wait until 2002 for his second win. He completed a hat-trick of wins with seven-time winner Richard Leake in 2002 and 2004 and then won again in 2006 with Francois Jordan. While the whole of Botswana were praying for another Hobler victory, Evan Hutchison and Daryl Curtis were still in the lead in the special vehicle category. The motor white car was being chased by Shamir Variawa and Siegfried Rousseau, who had not put a wheel wrong all day and were looking menacing in the team total porter. Cully and Quinton Silwald had only shifted up a gear, and behind them, George Barkhazen and David Van Veek were having a great one, and Toyota now had four cars in the top five in the production vehicle category. Chasing after the Toyota were Colin Matthews and Alan Smith, with the Century Racing pair looking to be in good shape. The Class P lead was still in the hands of Archie Rutherford and Mike Lawrenson with the Regent Racing Jimco under attack from the impressive Willem and Dana Foss. Behind the Rustenburg pair, trouble was looming for Rutherford and Lawrenson in the form of Johan and Dion Besaignot, who were quickly closing in on the Regent Racing Jimco. The Besaignot started fourth in class and had worked their way ahead of a string of cars to move into a challenging position. Among the Beside Notes victims were Dion Fenter and Ian Palmer, who were in complete control of Class D in the 4x4 Mega World Toyota Hilux. Swaziland driver John Thompson and stand-in co-driver Zelda Nimont were still third in Class P, but were being hunted down by championship leaders Johan van Staden and James Rousseau, who had also made up ground through the field in the Atlas Copco Bat. Behind Van Staden and Rousseau, it was turning into a good day for the Besaidenhout family, with Bez Besaidenhout and daughter-in-law Lindy in control of Class B in their Denko bet. Behind them, the Class E lead still belonged to Malcolm Koch and Johan Berger in a Toyota Hilux. It was almost milking time for this lady, while at the front of the field there had been another twist in what had been an intriguing battle up front. Anthony Taylor and Robin Houghton were back in the lead in the Team Castrol Toyota Hilux, courtesy of a puncture that delayed teammates Duncan Foss and Rob Howie. Punches were easy to come by with small tree stumps and rocks on the side of the road, ready to punish anyone who strayed off the track by even the smallest of margins. These stumps and rocks are known in the trade as lurkers and have ruined many a race for competitors looking set to pick up good results. Taylor and Houghton had built up a lead of just over a minute ahead of Chris Fuss and Yapi Bardnos, who'd also moved ahead of Duncan Foss and Rob Howie. Fuss and Bardnos had won twice this season before going to Botswana and once again were in a menacing position. Foss and Howie had managed to get going ahead of Hannes Hobler and Henita Stecher, and Toyota still had a hold on the first three places in the production vehicle category. Grobler and Tostega were only seconds behind Foss and Howie, with Grobler's popularity in Botswana winning BMW a whole new following. There had also been a change at the front of the special vehicle category. Evan Hutchison and Daryl Curtis had fallen by the wayside, and Shamir Variawa and Siegfried Rousseau now had the lead in the team total porter. They were ahead of Cully and Quinton Sulwalt, while George Barkhazen and David Van Veek had strengthened Toyota's hold on the top places in the production vehicle category. Four of the top five positions were now occupied by Toyotas, and after a season characterized by inconsistency from the Bloemfontein crew, the drive by Barkhazen and Van Veek rated as one of the highlights of the day. Just a little further back, Herman and Wichard Silvart had moved into third place among the specials, with a progress watched by a pair of enterprising locals who had the best seats in the house. 
brothers Johan and Jon Besidenot had finally moved to the front of the Class B field in the Adenko Bat, and championship leaders Johan van Staden and James Rousseau had also got past Archie Rutherford and Mike Lawrenson, who'd slipped off the radar. John Thompson and Zelda Niemand were up in the third place in Class B, with veteran Bono Bertolt and Philip Herselman up to fourth in a second Atlas Copco Bat. The 4x4 Mega World Toyota Hilux of Dion Fenton and Ian Palmer was still in full control of Class D, with the rest of the opposition in disarray. Toyota Hilux crew Malcolm Kark and Johan Berger had done a good job to stay at the front of the Class E field, while Kutsia Labuskachny and daughter Sandra took over the lead in Class B, when Bears and Lindy Besedenhout fell by the wayside in the Adenko Bat. Gerald LaRue and Willem Pretorius were soldiering along in the Rubicon Ford Ranger, while Class A crew Jimmy Zahos and Stefan Kutsia were stuck behind Hilnell and Jako Jonk, who were now second in Class B. At the back of the field, Lance Woolridge and Ward Huxtable were still without four-wheel drive, but the Team Ford Ranger was still running with a pair third in Class E. At the end of a dramatic day, Anthony Taylor and Robin Houghton finished with a flourish to lead home the production vehicle contingent. After starting the day fifth on the road, two-time winners Shamir Vawiyawa and Sifrid Rousseau finished at the front of the Special Vehicle Brigade with a handy lead over Cully and Quinton Silwald. The spotlight then shifted to the technical crews, who had to ready their charges for another long and tough challenge on day two of the Toyota Kalahari Botswana 1000 Desert Race. Oh, that was unbelievably technical, so that was verschrikkelijk. But you have to see the bakkies good to draw, and yes, I would say, the bakkies in one step, and absolutely, here and there a fokie, but no, it was not just a normal onderhoud that we were going to do. Toyota held the first three positions in the production vehicle category, with Hannes Schrober and Henny Tersteger a handy fourth in the RFS BMW. Duncan just uh, had a flat wheel in front of us, and he, he got onto the road ahead of us, probably five seconds ahead of us, so we've had to fall back another 40 seconds uh, because of the dust. But we're there, I think we're about three minutes behind the leaders, and uh, I think it's quite good, and I, I'm quite happy. It's still a long way tomorrow. There was more drama when the law of averages caught up with Mike Whitehouse and Matthew Carlson and put an end to 27 consecutive finishers in the championship. Came around, around the corner, the 90 right. Um, all, all was fun, but there was a big stump in a uh, bush on the back right, clipped it, and it just put us over so quickly. Uh, there had no time to wreck. It was in a dangerous position as well because we had a whole lot of guys around us. But uh, Bevan Bertolt uh, stopped, helped us out, took time. His fantastic uh, uh, spirit made sure we were fine, uh, pulled us over, two attempts got us over. Then the throttle sensor had gone. So we tried to reset the computer and uh, just couldn't reset the computer. So there was our bundle. <laughs> After more than eight hours of racing, less than three minutes separated the top four cars in the production vehicle category. A great performance took Fenter and Palmer into six in a Class D car with two Class E entries in the top ten. From fifth in the special vehicle category at the start to a comfortable lead at the overnight halt, it could not have been a better day for Shamir Bawiyawa and Sifrid Rousseau. I went fine. Uh, we, uh, I think we were a second special at the halfway. And uh, I believe Evan had a problem, so uh, then we were, out, we were out in front on the special vehicles and then we just drove it. But the route, the route is not for a special vehicle, it's for, it's for, it's for the, the SPs. Uh, very, very, very tight and twisty. A tough day in the African bush left Herman and Richard Sulwald in a handy position in third place among the special vehicles. Uh, the desert race is unique in the sense that there's a, a lot of uh, tight stuff, thicker sand, the car is more, um, more handful. So uh, the, the more you do the desert, I think the, the easier it gets, but it's never easy. The desert is always a tough race and, and today is a long day uh, and very tough. It was also a satisfactory day for Class B leader Kutsia Labuskachny, who opted for a more conservative approach that paid handsome dividends. I saw a lot of cars next to the road there. I think the guys were trying to push it a little bit. Obviously, uh, you know, there were a lot of lurkers with stone and little stumps there and everything. So a lot of guys got flat wheels there. So you had to be careful and keep it neat and tidy. But I think everybody drove a little longer than what they actually anticipated. 
with the sun setting over Kumakwani, the special vehicle results put Shamir Varyawa and Siegfried Rousseau in a powerful position ahead of the two Silwal crews. They were followed by four Class P crews with a stage set for drama on day two of the Toyota Kalahari Botswana 1000 Desert Race. Join us next week for highlights of day two of the Toyota Kalahari Botswana 1000 Desert Race in Botswana. Only right here on Supersport, your world of champions.